I hope and pray that all of you are familiar with that great animated classic, A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. But just in case you aren't, here's how that great classic begins. It's the eve of Thanksgiving, and Charlie Brown receives a phone call from his extremely assertive friend, Peppermint Patty, who proceeds to invite herself over for Thanksgiving dinner. But there's a problem. Charlie Brown and his family are not hosting a Thanksgiving dinner. In fact, their plans are to go over to his grandmother's condominium later in the day. But before Charlie Brown can explain any of this to Peppermint Patty, she hangs up the phone. But then things go from bad to worse when the phone rings again and Peppermint Patty's on the other line and she explains to Charlie Brown that she has invited two additional friends to Charlie's big turkey party. Again, Peppermint Patty hangs up the phone, leaving a bewildered Charlie Brown to wonder what on earth has just happened. I'm doomed, he says. But then his faithful friend Linus enters from off scene and offers a solution. That's easy, Charlie Brown. You simply have two dinners. You cook the first one for yourself and your friends, and then you go to your grandmother's with your family for the second one. So Charlie Brown goes to work. He deputizes his, his faithful beagle, Snoopy, to cook the Thanksgiving dinner. Snoopy goes to work with his little comrade, uh, uh, Woodstock, and they create a meal of popcorn, jelly beans, and toast. Well, the friends arrive. They are seated at a ping pong table, and Snoopy proceeds to dish out his Thanksgiving fare. But when the plate lands in front of Peppermint Patty, she picks up a piece of popcorn and she turns to Charlie Brown and says, what kind of Thanksgiving dinner is this? Where's the turkey, Chuck? Don't you know anything about Thanksgiving dinners? Where's the mashed potatoes? Where's the cranberry sauce? Where's the pumpkin pie? Now, I won't spoil the ending for those of you who have not yet seen it. But I bring us here to this crisis point in the animated classic, A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, because Peppermint Patty is expressing well what a person can feel like if they are new to the Anglican tradition as we draw close to Christmas. I can distinctly remember as a child coming to church on one Sunday morning. I was just old enough to realize that we were getting close to Christmas, and so I came to church with the expectation that we would be singing Christmas carols. But when the opening hymn began, I thought to myself, what on earth is going on? Where are the Christmas carols? Where is the angels we have heard on high? Where is the O come all ye faithful? Don't these people know anything about Christmas? After all, I'd just seen my grandfather carrying the low notes in the bass section in the singing Christmas tree at First Baptist Church not two days prior. But of course, what I did not yet understand is that different branches of the Christian family tree have different traditions. And our tradition as Anglicans is to hold off on Christmas until we get to the eve of that great feast day. We prepare for it. We anticipate it. We long for it through a season called Advent. Now, I'll confess that when I was younger, I used to chafe against those Advent hymns with all of their themes of longing and their brooding, haunting tunes, all while the rest of the world is singing Deck the Halls and Jingle Bells. Perhaps you know some of those Advent hymns. O come, O come, Emmanuel, creator of the stars of night. And this hymn that we just sang a moment ago, Wake, Awake, for night is flying. But I've come to discover that the older I get, the more I find I yearn for this season and its hymns of longing. The more I find myself at home with being out of tune with the world during these four weeks of Advent. See, Advent is a season that has enough courage to be honest and admit that this world is not the way it's supposed to be. Advent is a season that brings into focus the reality that this world is longing to be made right again. 
And if you've ever prayed a prayer like, Jesus, I need you, we need you to come back and clean up this mess. If you've ever cried out like the prophet Isaiah, as we heard just a moment ago, when he said, oh Lord, that you would come down, rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. If you've ever prayed a prayer like that, a God, we need you right now kind of a prayer. A Lord, this is broken and I don't know how to fix it kind of prayer. A Father, I have a need and I have no way to fill it kind of prayer. If you've ever prayed a prayer like that, then Advent is a season for you. You may have noticed that the colors have changed this morning. We are coming out of a long season of green, and we have entered into a season that's now marked by the color blue. And while the connection is only coincidental, I do find that this color to be a helpful reminder that for some of us here this morning, it will be a blue Christmas. For some of us here this morning, the brokenness of this world is not just some abstract theological concept. No, for some of us here this morning, the brokenness of this world is staring us in the face. For some of you, this is a season where you will be acutely aware, acutely aware of the absence of someone whom you love but no longer see. For others, you or someone close of you is afflicted with some illness and you are worried to tears about a broken body or a broken mind or a broken spirit. For others, you are experiencing the brokenness of this world in some significant relationship that is falling apart. A relationship that should be marked by affection but which is instead broken by strife and conflict and your heart is breaking. Others of you are stuck in some dead-end job where you feel like you're shackled and you don't have any options and and you just have to keep chipping away. I'd be willing to wager that for some of us here this morning, the color blue is right on the nose. Friends, Advent is a season to be honest about these things. It's a season that invites us to cry out like Isaiah, O Lord, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Oh, Jesus, that you would return right now and mend everything that's broken. So, yes, there will come a time for Christmas carols. But for now and for this season, we sing those old Advent hymns that tell the truth about this world. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our sins and fears. Release us, please, 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 Lord Jesus, let us find our rest in Thee. So in this season of Advent, we tell the truth about the brokenness of the world, and yet there is a purpose to this truth-telling. We give voice to what's broken, not so that we can wallow in it or be stuck in it. No, Advent is a season that tells the truth that the world isn't right, so that we can place that truth within the larger truth about Jesus Christ. His promise to come again. His call upon us to go out and serve and minister in the world while we await His second coming. Jesus spoke plainly about this fact that He would come again. Again, listen again to what He said uh, that we just heard here a moment ago in Mark 13. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels, his angels, to gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Friends, Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, there aren't going to be any more tears. That's a promise. 
And after making that promise, Jesus then goes into issuing a fourfold wake-up call. He says, be on guard and keep awake, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. Jesus must know that we have a little bit of an attention deficit disorder. He, he repeats it for us. Stay awake. Awake to what? Awake to his promise to come again. And awake to his call upon our lives to serve as we await that coming. Those of you who are my age or older, you will remember those days when the Sears wish book would arrive in the mail. It was an 800-page catalog of unparalleled glory. <laughs> it displayed in full color every conceivable item that you could want for Christmas. Now, from a child's perspective, most of what was found in those pages of that catalog could be summarized with the words, blah, blah, blah. It was the stuff you had to get through to make your way to that one little section of 20-odd pages that, that covered all the toys that Sears had on offer. There were remote control cars, there were dolls, there were puzzles, and, and there were, were walkie-talkies, and there were Legos. I mean, it was endless. Each year, I'd get fixated on some particular big-ticket item and wonder, would St. Nicholas be able to bring that to me? You could never be quite sure what old St. Nick would be willing to leave under the tree, but the one thing you never doubted is that he would come because he always did. Now, there were no guarantees about the gift that he would bring, but the one thing you knew for certain is that he would come back once again. And that hope and anticipation could carry you through all sorts of difficulties. Even if you were getting bullied on the playground, you knew. You knew that if you could just hang on, you knew you could count on old St. Nick, and that hope would carry you through. And it's this kind of childlike trust, it's this kind of joyful anticipation that Jesus wants us to have about his promise to come again. Because you see, if you can come to a place where you're able to trust our Lord's promise to return and make all things right, that, then that hope and that anticipation can carry you through the trials and difficulties of this broken world. Friends, Jesus wants to give you the grace of a blessed assurance. He wants to give you the grace of a joyful hope that he is a man of his word and that he will come again to make everything new again. And so he issues this wake-up call. Stay awake to the promise. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Friends, if you come here this morning with a need for God to renew your childlike anticipation of his return, if the challenges of this broken world have, have caused you to fall asleep to the hope of that promise, then friends, call upon the Holy Spirit. It would be His great delight to reawaken to you Jesus' promise to come again and make all things new. What I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. So Advent is a season when we place the truth of the brokenness of this world within the larger truth of our Lord's promise to come again. But friends, this is also a season to be reawakened to God's call to serve in His name. Oftentimes when we are going through something difficult, the first question that comes to mind is why. My hunch is that almost everybody in here has come to that point where you've asked the why question. Why is this happening? Why am I experiencing this pain or this struggle? Why? Now, friends, why is a normal and natural question to ask when we are going through difficult seasons? It's normal and natural. But I'm here to tell you that it's not the most helpful question to ask. Why is not the question that will get you moving forward again? 
Friends, if you've come here this morning and the brokenness of this world is staring you in the face, I want to suggest a different question than why. What now, O oh Lord? What would you have your servant do today? How might I minister in your name today? Whose life can I bless in your name today? From why to what now, O oh Lord? Going back to what Jesus said in this passage from the gospel according to Mark, Jesus said this. He said, it is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work. He's talking about you. He's talking about us. He's given us a work to do. In just a moment, we will be sharing the Lord's Supper, and then you all will depart and go back to your lives out there in the world. Friends, stay awake. Keep alert. Do not miss the little opportunities to serve and minister that God is going to place in your path this week. An opportunity to offer a kind word that can heal, or some act of charity to meet a need, or a listening ear that ascribes to the speaker dignity and worth. They're so easy to miss. These opportunities from God, they, they seem like such little things at first glance, so insignificant and of no consequence, but make no mistake. When the sons and daughters of God begin their day with this kind of prayer, use me this day, O Lord. Minister through me today, O Lord. What would you have your servant do this day, O Lord? When the sons and daughters of God are awake to his call upon their lives, then look out. For when you surrender yourself in service into the hands of the living and almighty God, he can bring about changes which we could hardly imagine. Stay awake to his call to minister and serve. Stay awake to the persons whom he places in your life this week. Stay awake and listen for the prompting of his Holy Spirit. Small offerings in the hands of a mighty God can move mountains. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Advent is a season to tell the truth about this broken world so that we can place that truth within the larger truth of our Lord's promise to come again and in so doing be reawakened to the hope of that promise. And it's also a season to be reawakened to God's call upon us to minister and serve. May this season of Advent, with all of its quiet longing, reawaken within us that hope and that resolve to serve our Lord and Master. What I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are a man of your word. We thank you for your promise to come again in your own time and to make all things right. As we await your return, we ask by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would renew and reawaken within us that hope, that joyful anticipation, and that you would reawake, reawaken and renew as well our sense of calling as we go out from this place. Lord Jesus, that you might take your light and your truth and having planted it in our hearts, you might take it out into this world that we might minister and serve in your name. For we ask these things in the power of that name. Amen.